The Diamonds fans have travelled down to Surrey in their volumes for this one. The car parks behind this Kingsfield Stadium are packed with coaches Mark Rushton and Diamonds travelling army. And there's actually a bit of added interest in this one today because Brian Tolbert is unveiling his new signing, David Mehew. Mehew has arrived at Nen Park in the last couple of days from Farnborough and is a solution to the sudden lack of forward cover in the Diamond squad. Now Darren Collins starts a two-game suspension and Colin West is still unavailable through injury. So Mehew partners a fit again Adrian Foster in one of only two changes from the side that demolished Cheltenham at Nen Park last week. Well, the Diamonds fans give their team a rapturous welcome here at the Kingsfield Stadium and from what we've heard so far, they might well outsing the home supporters this afternoon, but here come the Diamonds. And, well, Mehu is one, as I said, of only two changes from the team that beat Cheltenham at Nem Park last week. The other one being the uh, reintroduction of Michael Meissen into the Diamonds midfield. He comes back after a one-match suspension and replaces Mark Cooper, who maybe finds himself a little bit unlucky to be on the uh, substitutes bench this afternoon because he, of course, scored a blinder against Cheltenham. And it's actually been a pretty busy time here at the Kingsfield Stadium lately on the team front because manager John McGovern has recently sold defender Kevin Brown to Yeovil, meaning that he's had to bring in number seven Rod Macari on loan until the end of the season from Fulham and has signed defender Richard Goddard from Brentford for £7,500. Well, the two skippers going up for the toss there, both wearing number eight today, Gary Butterworth, of course, for Rushden, and the, uh, the Woking skipper today is number eight, Andy Ellis. Well, frankly, we couldn't have a better recipe for a cracking game of GM Vauxhall Conference football this afternoon because just looking down the, uh, these two teams' recent records, taking Rushden and Diamonds first from their last eight games in the Vauxhall Conference, the Diamonds have won seven and actually scored 23 goals in that eight-game sequence and conceded just four. Well, Wokings is nearly as impressive because from that, their last six home matches, they've won five, with the only blemish in that sequence being a defeat last month here against Kettering Town. Well, Woking are on the attack earlier with uh, Makari over on that right-hand side. Well, this is such an impressive little uh, Vauxhall Conference Stadium, very compact and so close to the pitch with... A really excellent uh, stand, you have to say, built behind that uh, left-hand goal, which you'll be seeing throughout today's game. Of course, what with Darren Collins uh, being suspended for this one today, Brian Talbot found himself in a bit of a tight corner as regards strikers as Tim Woodding has to pass the ball across the face of his own goal there. All the Diamonds get away with it as Butterworth feeds Paul Underwood. Only uh, four minutes gone and we've had a pretty lively start as Underwood moves forward and tries to feed Meissen here. A superb early chance for Rushton and Michael Meissen has given the Diamonds the lead. Four minutes gone and exactly the start Rushton and Diamonds wanted. The fans below us can't really believe their eyes but Michael Meissen has given Rushton and Diamonds a dream start here at the Kingsfield Stadium this afternoon. Underwood's ball through was absolute precision. It dissected the Woking defence and actually Meissen allowed that to run on. Lawrence Batty was already beaten really by Underwood's through ball and that finish from Meissen was tucked away into an empty net. Well, Michael Meissen, he, uh, he got one against Kettering a few weeks ago, was woking attack there through Steele. Well, yeah, Meissen got one against um, Kettering, of course, in the local derby, which the Diamonds won 4-0. And since that game, the uh, goal-scoring floodgates have opened up for him because he scored against Staley Bridge, of course was then out suspended for the Cheltenham match and of course on his return to the Diamonds team has scored the first today as Butterworth, well Butterworth took a, a nasty knock on his ankle there from uh, well the, uh, the Woking number nine Darren Hay and Butterworth's got to be careful I guess because his uh, ankle's still fragile after that knock that it received up at Gateshead and Simon Parcel and the, uh, well, the Diamond supporters, although they're certainly buoyed by that opening strike, must be slightly concerned at the sight of a, a, uh, a, a grounded Gary Butterworth. But it looks as though he's OK now. As that ball was cleared by Ellis, and that's Bradshaw leaping all over Hay. The free kick's been awarded for the challenge from Capone on Andy Ellis. And Woking want to take this quickly, and I'm sure they do. 10 minutes gone, Woking nil, Rushden and Diamonds won. That's Steele trying to break through the challenges of Butterworth and Wooding. It's going to come out here to Robin Taylor. Bradshaw's headed clearance, that was Ellis again, certainly in the thick of things this afternoon, the Woking skipper. Nice touch there by Mehew. he's shown some good early flicks, David Mehew. 
and the ball by Capone to Foster Adrian Foster was marginally offside there according to the uh, assistant referee on this near side Mr Merchant and Wooding's going to take that free kick for the Diamonds it was looking towards David Mehew it's going to come back to Butterworth who shoots didn't really trouble Lawrence Batty too much the goalkeeper got his uh, body behind it successfully a decent strike by Butterworth hasn't scored since that uh, stunning victory over Halifax but uh, Butterworth tr was trying to add, add his name to the score sheet then Lawrence Batty this experienced Woking goalkeeper dealt with it still Woking nil Rushden won halfway through the first half now Michael Myson's goal separating the two teams as Michael Michael Myson lets the ball uh, run to Gary Butterworth whose ball in that resulted in a diamonds free kick Foster was the player uh, going over under the challenge from Goddard proving to be a bit of a physical character actually Richard Goddard in the opening stages of this game plenty of diamonds players want to crack at this free kick Kenny Crumman is the left footed expert well, Wooding leaves that for Kenny Crumman oh well that pinged off Rod McCary in the wall and maybe Woking can attack here with Wayne Sutton Scott Steele's making a decent uh, diagonal run while well, the ball was played towards Kevin Betsy plenty of players up there Steele's looking for the ball so Steve West and Eddie Saunders is making a forward run now what will uh, Ellis's free kick deliver here well it came all the way through bit of danger there for the Diamonds Fortunately for Mark Smith and his defenders, a Woking player failed to get a touch on that. Otherwise it could well have been one all. It's going to come out to Goddard here. We've got time and space in which to cross. And that's a decent ball in looking for Makari. Ellis! Well, the ball was hooked clear by Darren Bradshaw then. Bit of danger for the Diamonds there. That's Betsy, who was Paul was looking for steal. Intercepted by Mehew. Well, Mehew's ball really could have been a lot better than it was there. This is Ellis. Plenty of movement by Woking players, but at the moment the Diamonds are shutting them down rather convincingly, although it's going to come out to Makari here who shoots. Well, it nearly fell, fell for steel then. Crumman and now Capone can clear this for Rushden. We're certainly being treated to an entertaining fixture this afternoon as Capone has made tracks about 40 yards up the pitch there. I think he took a knock at the end of that attack, Julian Capone. David Meehew's trying to hold play up for the Diamonds there. Supporting him now is Kenny Crumman, who's ball in, wins the corner for Rushden. And it looks as if Julian Capone's in a bit of bother down there. Wooding will take this corner for Rushden now, though, and that's Myson leaping. Drifted over his head, but it might come out to Julian Capone here, and he looks fine now, Julian Capone, who's balling towards Meehew, and that's Foster. Tremendous save there by Lawrence Batty. That certainly prevented the Diamonds from going two goals up good move really because Capone's ball in was such a teasing one here it is now drifted in by uh, Julian Capone and that's Mehew getting a nice touch on and Foster from point blank range you'd expect him to score really but full marks to Lawrence Batty great save well, that's Myson trying to win a header in midfield that was Darren Hay challenging the Diamonds winning again in midfield that's uh, Foster setting the ball up beautifully for Julian Capone the Diamonds one touch football at the moment it's a joy to watch as Julian Capone beats Ellis and settles for the corner and at the moment the Diamonds are running their opponents ragged tizzling form so far in this game Julian Capone well that ball was aiming towards Foster although I think that was Scott Steele who managed to get the clearing header in for Woking or the Cardinals as they're known in uh, this patch that was Goddard getting a headed clearance in it's going to come only as far as Tim Wooding though and the Diamonds continuing to pressurise their opponents this time Batty deals with the cross rather comfortably although it's only as far as Kenny Crumman and at the moment Woking a surrendering possession and with the sort of sizzling form the Diamonds have been showing so far in this game you have to say you, <laughs> Woking can't really afford to give them too many touches on the ball because we've already seen what they can do breaking through from midfield And that goal by Michael Myson actually means that he's now scored twice against Woking this season. In the fixture uh, up at Nen Park in the early part of uh, this campaign, the Diamonds won 2-1 as Foster tried to turn and shoot there. And well, there's a substitution going on down there, going off his uh, 
the Woking number six Wayne Sutton who I think took a knock a little bit earlier in a challenge with Gary Butterworth and coming on is uh, Scott Smith so a relatively early substitution being made by John McGovern Gary Butterworth Foster twisting and turning again in the Woking penalty area well played by Adrian Foster setting up Underwood again and while this might come out to Michael Meissen again it didn't intercepted by Goddard this is Kevin Betsy the Diamonds rock solid again at the back the Woking have a corner in front of their own fans over on the left hand side and that's Smith punching clearance completed by Chris White although I think Mr uh, Tomlin had given the free kick anyway to the Diamonds but play resumes over on that left hand side well that's Chris White shadowing number 10 Steve West Mihu laying it back towards Gary Betterworth poor ball by Betterworth intercepted by uh, Eddie Saunders Andy Ellis losing out there this is Julian Capone the Diamonds trying to move forward with in numbers here again well Julian Capone went over there and the player who gave away the free kick was Robin Taylor although he's not too happy about it Robin Taylor Woking being given such a run for their money on their own manner so far this afternoon as Tim Wooding aims that free kick towards Chris White an important interception then by Betsy and Andy Ellis will just about manage to keep that in play over on the, uh, the far side only as far as Darren Bradshaw and the ball will come to Paul Underwood here hugging that left hand touchline as per usual Paul Underwood and trying to cut inside here now setting up Kenny Crumman in support good ball in by Crumman that's Foster again well the second header he's had on target still failed to get a worthwhile shot on target so far the home team remains Woking nil Rushton and Diamonds one well that was Foster being slightly upset at the decision given against him there it's launched towards Darren Hay well well claimed there by Mark Smith such a domineering character in the air the Diamonds goalkeeper that's Underwood's touch Mihu to Crumman nice play by the Diamonds unfortunately uh, Crumman's final ball through wasn't quite uh, on Mihu's wavelength Chris White and uh, Hay challenging in the air there Hay's going to set that up for Andy Ellis here well he's being shadowed by Paul Underwood Gary Butterworth now out of play well the home uh, team beginning to apply a little bit more pressure now Woking that's Underwood getting the clearance in for the Diamonds though it might fall for Mihu here although he was being jostled then by uh, Eddie Saunders and indeed Saunders gave away a free kick there this is Kevin Betsy nice uh, ball inside there looking for Makari being shadowed by Darren Bradshaw well, Makari did well there in supporting uh, and setting up Betsy there that ball was aiming towards Steele and it might well fall for Darren Hay here well Kenny Crumman's unorthodox clearance fell uh, rather conveniently for Darren Bradshaw there who can clear for Rushton that's Foster and Mehew oh nice return ball by Mehew although that might be a little bit uh, too much in front of Adrian, Adrian Foster well Batty with uh, quite calm play there setting up Robin Taylor on this uh, left hand side for Woking this is Betsy who likes to swap flanks a lot Kevin Betsy he lined up as a right back before the match but it looks as though he's one of those players who enjoys swapping his flanks and teasing defenders that's Robin Taylor clipping the ball in and was looking for steal might come out to Makari here well the shot on goal was a reasonable one by Makari just failed to get any sting in the shot but this is Betsy on the, the uh, right hand side for Woking setting up Steele here again the cross was a fairly poor one from the Woking midfielder it's going to come back to Andy Ellis here what can the Woking skipper do he can set up Makari who in turn pings the ball in towards Darren Hay but Woking just aren't getting any change out of the Diamonds defence at the moment 
Chris White and Darren Bradshaw are standing absolutely solid in there. That's Steele. Well, Bradshaw and Myson trying to work the ball forward there, but there isn't time. Michael Myson's goal after just four minutes is dividing the teams at the moment. It's Woking nil. Rushden and Diamonds won at half time, and I guess the message from Brian Tolbert to his players will be keep going as you are because they're beating Woking in impressive fashion. Now join us after the break for the second half. 3,900 are here at the Kingsfield Stadium today. A attendance which is no doubt boosted by the large volumes of travelling Diamond supporters but it's one of the best attendances they've seen here at Kingsfield Stadium so far this season although it's not the best attendance that came on uh, November the 15th when Southend United came here in an FA Cup tie and uh, 5,200 watched that one got a corner in the opening moments of the second half taken over on that far side by Steele so many players backed in there for Woking well Smith had to punch that clear it might only come as far as Andy Ellis who controls the ball well ball whipped in by Ellis and a chance right at the second half is squandered for uh, Woking the ball in by Ellis was uh, nodded just wide by Scott Steele and well what a wonderful opportunity to get on level terms in the opening minute of this second period Steele glanced his header just wide of Mark Smith's right hand post as Capone storms forward at the other end now for Diamonds. He's had a superb game in the Diamonds midfield, Julian Capone. Taking on Goddard there, the ball's only as far as uh, the Woking substitute Scott Smith. But that's going to be a corner for Rushton, much to the uh, delight of the travelling Diamonds supporters. Woodings ball in. Mehew! Oh, just above Adrian Foster's head. That's Kenny Crum and uh, with a rather uh, precarious clearance then for the Diamonds. It's going to fall for Woking. And that's Betsy's ball in. Well claimed by Mark Smith. It's being challenged there by Darren Hay on his near post, but he claimed that faultlessly, Mark Smith. This is Butterworth now. Ball can, might, might come back to Kenny Crum and instead it goes inside to Mihu who loses out to Ellis. You certainly sense so much more urgency about Woking now this second half has commenced. Moving forward is Betsy and the ball in towards Steele. Well Steele's first touch was poor then. And if only Scott Steele had managed to properly control that through ball from Betsy. That's Goddard's header only as far as John Hampshire. Hampshire who's come on this afternoon for Julian Capone straight swap on the uh, right side of the midfield and I think Capone took a bit of a knock actually because he's been one of the pick of the diamonds players today although so far it's been a pretty good all-round uh, performance by the team from North East North Ants and they're still hanging on although currently by the skin of their teeth to that goal after four minutes from Michael Myson and that's Myson trying to win the ball from Macquarie there doesn't get away with it, Woking still have possession, that's into Darren Hay. Macquarie will take over and he might set this up for Andy Ellis here. Good effort by Ellis. Well, it was always uh, sailing over really. They're hanging on currently, Rushden. Darren Bradshaw gave away that corner. Going to be knocked in by Macquarie. Ooh, diving uh, clearance by Paul Underwood then. Everyone's helping out back in the Diamonds defence there. The ball was whipped in again. That's Ellis trying to get a touch on it and it might fall here. Well, the chance there. Well, it fell to Steve West and such an important interception by Chris White there. That might well have diverted the ball uh, away from Mark Smith's net. Although the Diamonds failed to get the corner clear again. It's only as far as uh, Steele. Good cross by Steele. And that's Chris White in there again with an important headed clearance. Although, well, the referee's given a goal kick. I I guess he must have felt that Steve West headed the ball out of play then and not the Diamonds defender Chris White. Just have a look at this again. Well played by Steele cutting inside and curling that one in with his left foot and well, can't really tell from that angle. Nice play there by uh, West. That's Hay with such pace over there. Oh, well Darren Hay went in late there on Mark Smith and Mark Smith's not happy about that as we can see. Darren Bradshaw's going to have to break them up here certainly Darren Hay slid in late then when the ball was already in the arms of Mark Smith the Woking number nine might well see a card for this one 
Well, I guess it's just down to which colour. Well, it's yellow. Perhaps a sensible decision there by the referee. That's another long kick by Batty. And again, the Diamonds have to defend with Darren Hay. He's looking so lively in this second half. That's Ellis again, who's been in the thick of most of the action for Woking this afternoon. Gets a return ball back then. Well played by Ellis, whipping the ball in. Chris White's header, and it's going to come back to Rod McAree, whose volley flashes wide of Mark Smith's goal. Well, one by one, Woking keep missing these chances, and, well, I just wonder if their home supporters are sensing that things are slipping away from them they've had all the pressure in this second half there's no doubt about that the diamonds have been totally uh, well backs to the wall really as Wooding will intercept that ball forward by Hay Steele will take it better was headed clearance although it will only go as far as Ellis another ball ping back in that's uh, West looking for it better getting his second important clearance in in the space of about 20 seconds although Ellis will retrieve this again Woking press forward that's only going to be as far as Michael Myson that's Mehu what can the Diamonds do here a rare space of possession for Rushton that's John Hampshire poor ball really by John Hampshire he was looking for Tim Wooding over on that far side only as far as Kevin Betsy whose technical skills have been a joy to watch this afternoon Kevin Betsy This is Betsy again, moving forward relatively unchallenged uh, Kevin Betsy, this is West, the ball in, Mark Smith again stretching to deal with that, poking with another corner and at this rate, well you have to say that it's surely not going to be long before they get an equaliser on the board as Steele pings in that corner, up in the air again, Smith punches clear. Andy Ellis has been totally in the thick of things for Woking. He's led by example as skipper as Macquarie tries one from distance. Still 1-0 to Rushden, deep into this second half here at the Kingsfield Stadium. Foster fouled there according to uh, Mr Tomlin. Goddard was the player adjudged to have fouled the diamond striker. Kenny Crammon now for Rushden, this is Paul Underwood. Chris White. That's Betsy who's put in a decent performance in the second half, getting the clearing header in for Woking. Well, Kenny Crumman has this for Rushden now. This is Underwood. Ball in low by Underwood, looking for uh, Butterworth then, who was well forward in that attack, although Kenny Crumman will have the ball again. Although Woking can break actually on the far side now. Macquarie's ball. This is Darren Hay. Macquarie's made a decent forward run there actually for Woking. Darren Hay's ball in though. Looking for Steele, although it's only going to come as far here as uh, Macquarie drives it wide. And Brian Talbot decides it's time to make a substitution and coming into the action is a youngster. Mark Rawl and the player off is David Mehew. So Brian Talbot brings Mehew off on his debut. He's worked effortlessly up front, David Mehew maybe hasn't got the bounce on one or two occasions this afternoon in his partnership up there with Foster but let's see what Mark Rawl can do now for these last 20 minutes or so here at Kingsfield Stadium Diamond still clinging on to this one goal advantage which should they hang on to it will be such a crucial result again in their quest for that top spot in the conference and of course another victory today would make it eight wins from nine starts in the conference and well even a neutral can see that that's the uh, form of a promotion team although so difficult really because of course only the one team makes it out of the conference this season into the football league Halifax still have the advantage at the moment they're several points clear of uh, both Woking and the Diamonds but a victory today well for either team would narrow that gap so uh, so much this is Rawl laying the ball outside to Foster who might take on uh, uh, Saunders well well played by Eddie Saunders managing to lay the ball off there to the uh, Woking substitute uh, Steve Smith that ball will come all the way over to the far side now the Diamond's got to be so careful there's not long for them to hang on 
not long simultaneously for Woking to get an equaliser although they nearly did there uh, Steve West then stuck it over Mark Smith's bar again the Diamonds have to defend Chris White managed to get that out only as far as Smith who turns inside that's Macari turning the ball in and the effort there a spectacular effort again by Steele that may well have been the equaliser but is it as it stands Woking have still failed to register although they might now with Betsy oh well he should have shot when he had the chance Kevin Betsy racing in on goal with pace there and he should have tucked that but wanted that couple of extra touches as the ball comes forward now to Mark Rawl who lays a decent ball into Foster well a good chance for the Diamonds here what can Foster do well he can turn he can shoot and he can score a sensational second for the Diamonds well would you believe this having soaked up all the pressure in the second half Woking have had so many chances the Diamonds race up field in injury time and look what Foster's done he's gone and scored a blinding second to send those Diamonds fans into ecstasy here at the Kingsfield Stadium a textbook goal Rules ball into Foster who took that in his stride and look at that for an unerring finish past Lawrence Batty a fantastic second for Rushden to wrap the points up here at the Kingsfield Stadium well a classic counter-attacking goal or what well they've been absolutely camped in their own half all this second half Rushden and well look what they've gone and done Crammond's ball up to Rawl, bang bang into Foster, 2-0 to the Diamonds and that last minute effort by Foster has been the icing on the cake in a truly excellent performance by the Diamonds this afternoon and really the celebrations here at the final whistle amongst the players, the management staff and the fans tell you exactly what this result means for Rushden, there's Foster, scorer of that blinding second goal for Rushden this afternoon, well that's the Diamonds eighth win from nine matches now Michael Myson, the other goal scorer there well Halifax and Cheltenham have already fallen victim to the Diamonds in the last couple of weeks and now Woking have fallen here at the Kingsfield Stadium this afternoon and the Diamonds promotion campaign bandwagon marches on to the Shea next Saturday when the Diamonds play Halifax of course away but after today's magnificent victory Brian Tolbert must be a happy man yeah all credit to the players eh? they, they battled Every, every inch of the way, I mean, they threw everything as a second half. We stood firm, we defended our box, they didn't really test Smithy at all. We made, maybe had made a couple of saves, but not really. Uh, we started brightly, especially first half, and scored a good goal, and then we could have added to it. And then late in the game, we break and score another great goal. Fair, fair play to the players, eh? Now in this one today, Brian, you were slick in the first half, you were pretty much in control, scrambling, I guess, in the second half, and the quality of the Diamonds defending today was absolutely top-notch, really, wasn't it? Well, I think you come to these places, Woking, I mean, you're going to go to Halifax next weekend, and you're going to have to defend. I mean, no question about it, they're going to throw everything at you. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, trying to win the league here, and teams are going to throw people forward, they're going to take chances, because they know they're in with a shout and we knew that it was going to be a battle, battle royal, and it was. Uh, but we defended strong, we had brave people, they put bodies in front of the, behind the ball, we threw ourselves at the ball, and they were first class. I couldn't ask any more. Well, when we went 1-0 up early, we knew that they had to come at us and score. And they were, there was a lot of space in the first half for us to play. We got a bit scrappy towards the end of the first half, where our passing game went, and at half time in the dressing room, we decided that We'll just sit behind the ball, let them come at us, because they, they have to score. So, well, we went to plan, we got the breakaway goal. We, we expected to get a breakaway goal, to be honest, because we knew there would be space if they kept them coming at us. But like, I hold my hand up, the back four today were amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable, it have been great all season, to be honest. But today that was amazing. Now, you've beaten Halifax already once, you've now beaten Woking, you've also beaten Cheltenham now. Of course, you go to Halifax next week, and I suppose that is the really big one, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> obviously, yeah. I mean, what are they, seven points clear? Although you say you uh, are, you don't look at it, but everyone's been having a little look at it. I feel, well, we'll, we'll go there confident that we can do a job. It all hinges on next, let's be honest, we've got, we've got to go there and win next week. No question about it. We're going to go there and attack them and try our best. Uh, no question about it. And we'll see, I mean, we're not going to sit back. If we go there and lose, that puts a big gap between us. So we've, got to, we've just got to do, go and do our best next week and see what happens. And when you're in form like this, Winning certainly is on the cards, isn't it, next week? Well, we, we, we will go there with confidence, but nothing's taken for granted. I mean, at the end of the day, we've got to get as many points as possible. And I've got to be honest, it's out of our hands, eh?
because if we beat Halifax next week, they're still favourites. They've got more points. Uh, and, but all it will do, it will make the last few games of the season very interesting.